Samantha Carter had always been the reliable one at work. Her colleagues often admired her dedication, though it sometimes bordered on obsession. As the lead project manager at a mid-sized marketing firm, Samantha was known for turning around failing projects and keeping clients happy, even when it meant staying late or working weekends. But things began to change when a new hire, Melissa, joined the team. Melissa was charismatic, outgoing, and ambitious, qualities that quickly endeared her to both the staff and the executives. Samantha noticed how Melissa seemed to be getting all the praise, even for projects Samantha had spearheaded. Still, she didn't mind too much. After all, the work was getting done, and that was what mattered. One fateful Monday, Samantha was called into her boss's office. As she stepped inside, she immediately sensed the tension in the room. Her boss, Mr. Hargrove, was sitting at his desk, his expression unreadable. Melissa was there, too, standing by the window, a look of concern etched on her face. Samantha, we need to talk, Mr. Hargrove began, his voice heavy with disappointment. We've received some serious allegations about your handling of the budget for the Dalton project. Samantha's heart skipped a beat. What do you mean? I managed that project within the allocated budget. Melissa chimed in, her voice laced with feigned sympathy. I'm so sorry, Samantha, but the numbers don't add up. The expenses are way over what was approved. It's all here in the report I compiled. Mr. Hargrove slid a folder across the desk toward Samantha. She opened it with trembling hands and stared at the figures, her mind racing. These weren't the numbers she had submitted. Someone had tampered with the budget, and it was clear who that someone was. I didn't, this isn't right, Samantha stammered, trying to keep her voice steady. I never approved these expenses. There must be a mistake. But Mr. Hargrove shook his head. I'm afraid we can't ignore this, Samantha. The company has decided to let you go, effective immediately. You'll also be responsible for covering the deficit. The world seemed to spin around her. Samantha couldn't believe what she was hearing. How could this be happening? She looked at Melissa, who met her gaze with a subtle smirk, before quickly masking it with a look of concern. As if the blow to her career wasn't enough, Samantha's personal life soon unraveled as well. Her husband, Jason, had grown distant over the past few months. His work as a software developer kept him busy, and Samantha had assumed it was just stress from his job. But the truth came out one evening when she returned home early to find him packing his bags. I can't do this anymore, Sam, Jason said, his voice cold and detached. You're always at work, and I, well, I met someone else. It just happened. Samantha felt like she had been punched in the gut. Someone else? Jason, we promised each other. But Jason cut her off. You were never here, Sam. And when you were, you were always exhausted or preoccupied. I need more than that. He left her standing in their living room, numb with shock, as he walked out the door without looking back. Within a week, Jason had filed for divorce, citing irreconcilable differences. Samantha's family, who had never fully approved of her career-driven lifestyle, turned away from her as well. They saw her job loss and failing marriage as the inevitable result of her choices. You should have focused more on your family, her mother had said during a brief, cold phone call. Maybe then things wouldn't have fallen apart. Now, with no job, no husband, and no support from her family, Samantha found herself on the brink of losing everything. Her savings dwindled rapidly as she tried to pay off the debt she had been unfairly saddled with. Within months, she was forced to sell her home and move into a small, dilapidated apartment in a rough part of town. Eventually, even that became too much to afford. One cold November evening, Samantha found herself standing on the street with nothing but a suitcase and the few belongings she had left. The wind howled through the narrow alleyways, and she shivered as she tried to figure out what to do next. She had always been strong, always been the one others leaned on. But now, for the first time in her life, Samantha felt utterly lost and alone. Yet deep within her, a small, flickering ember of determination remained. She didn't know how, but she vowed that she would survive this, that she would find a way to rebuild her life. With nothing but the clothes on her back and the strength of her resolve, Samantha took her first steps into the unknown, hoping that somewhere, somehow, she would find a way to start over. The days blurred together as Samantha wandered the streets, her body growing weaker with each passing hour. The crisp autumn air was turning colder, and she knew it wouldn't be long before winter set in. Every morning she would rise early, 
trying to find a place to keep warm or a kind soul who might offer her something to eat. It was a life she had never imagined for herself, but it was now her reality. One afternoon, as the sun dipped low on the horizon, Samantha found herself near a small park. She sat down on a weathered bench, wrapping her thin coat tighter around herself. Her stomach growled, reminding her she hadn't eaten in two days. She closed her eyes and leaned back, trying to muster the strength to keep going. Excuse me, miss, are you okay? Samantha's eyes fluttered open to see a young woman standing in front of her, holding a steaming cup of coffee in one hand and a small paper bag in the other. She was in her early twenties, with warm brown eyes and a kind smile. Samantha hesitated, embarrassed by her situation. I'm fine, she lied, though her voice trembled. Just tired, that's all. The young woman didn't seem convinced. She sat down next to Samantha and held out the coffee and bag. Please take this. You look like you could use it. Samantha hesitated again, but the smell of the coffee and the warmth of the woman's smile were too inviting to resist. She accepted the coffee and bag with trembling hands. Thank you, she murmured, her voice barely audible. My name's Lily, the young woman said, her tone gentle and reassuring. I volunteer at the community center down the street. We provide hot meals and a place to stay for people who need help. You're welcome to come by if you'd like. Samantha took a small sip of the coffee, feeling its warmth spread through her body. The paper bag contained a simple sandwich, but it was the best meal she'd had in days. She looked at Lily, her eyes filled with a mix of gratitude and vulnerability. I don't want to be a burden, she said softly. Lily shook her head, her expression sincere. You're not a burden. I promise. We all need a little help sometimes. And besides, it's getting colder out here. You shouldn't be on the streets. Tears welled up in Samantha's eyes, but she blinked them back. She hadn't cried in weeks, not even when she lost her home. But the kindness of this stranger, this young woman who had no reason to help her, touched something deep inside her. Okay, Samantha whispered, her voice trembling with emotion. I'll come. Lily smiled and stood up, offering Samantha a hand. Great, the center isn't far. Let's get you out of this cold. As they walked together, Samantha learned more about Lily. She was a college student studying social work, and she spent most of her free time volunteering at the community center. Helping people is what I've always wanted to do, Lily explained as they crossed the street. Everyone deserves a second chance, you know? Samantha nodded, feeling a spark of hope flicker to life within her. Maybe this was her second chance. When they arrived at the community center, Samantha was surprised by how warm and inviting it felt. The building was old, with peeling paint and creaky floors, but it was filled with life. People bustled about, chatting and laughing, while the smell of homemade soup wafted through the air. Lily led Samantha to the dining area, where a few volunteers were setting up for dinner. This is where we serve meals, Lily explained. You can sit wherever you like. I'll bring you a bowl of soup, and then we'll get you settled in. Samantha chose a seat near the corner, feeling both grateful and overwhelmed by the sudden change in her circumstances. She watched as Lily spoke to an older woman behind the serving counter, who then ladled a generous portion of soup into a bowl. When Lily returned with the food, Samantha felt her hands shake slightly as she took the bowl, the reality of her situation crashing down on her. Thank you, Samantha said, her voice thick with emotion. Lily smiled warmly. You're welcome. After you eat, we'll find you a room for the night. Samantha nodded, dipping her spoon into the soup. It was simple, a hearty vegetable broth. But to Samantha, it tasted like a feast. With each bite, she felt her strength returning, her resolve hardening. She wasn't sure what the future held, but for the first time in weeks, she felt like she had a chance. After finishing her meal, Samantha followed Lily to the back of the building, where the temporary housing rooms were located. They were modest but clean, each with a bed, a small dresser, and a window that looked out onto the street. This will be your room for now, Lily said as she opened the door to a small, cozy space. It's not much, but it's warm and safe. Samantha stepped inside and took a deep breath. The room smelled faintly of lavender, and the bed looked more comfortable than anything she'd seen in a long time. She turned to Lily, her eyes filled with gratitude. This is perfect, she said, her voice breaking. Lily reached out and gently squeezed Samantha's arm. I'm glad you think so. You can stay here as long as you need to. Tomorrow, 
We can talk about next steps, okay? Samantha nodded, too overcome with emotion to speak. As Lily left, closing the door behind her, Samantha sat down on the bed, feeling the weight of the past few weeks finally lifting. She knew she still had a long road ahead, but for the first time in what felt like forever, she wasn't walking it alone. Curling up under the blanket, Samantha closed her eyes and allowed herself to hope again. The next morning, Samantha woke to the soft sounds of life outside her window. It took a moment for her to remember where she was. The small room, with its simple furniture and cozy warmth, was a stark contrast to the harsh streets she had wandered for weeks. As she stretched and rubbed her eyes, a sense of tentative peace settled over her. Today was a new day. After getting dressed, Samantha made her way to the dining area, where a few people were already gathered, eating breakfast. She felt a flutter of nerves, uncertain of how to fit into this new world. But the aroma of freshly brewed coffee and the hum of conversation drew her in. Good morning. Lily's cheerful voice greeted her as she approached the counter. Lily was busy pouring coffee into mugs, her ever-present smile brightening the room. I was just about to bring you breakfast. How did you sleep? Samantha smiled back, feeling a warmth she hadn't felt in a long time. Better than I have in weeks. Thank you for everything, Lily. It's no trouble at all. I'm just glad you're here, Lily replied, handing Samantha a mug of coffee. Take a seat wherever you like. We've got oatmeal, toast, and fruit this morning. Samantha filled a plate and chose a seat by the window. As she ate, she observed the people around her. Some were older, their faces lined with the hardships they had endured. Others were younger, like her, caught in the unexpected turns of life. Despite their differences, they all shared a common bond. They were survivors. As Samantha finished her meal, a woman in her late thirties, with short-cropped hair and kind eyes, approached her table. Mind if I join you? She asked, holding a tray with her own breakfast. Of course, Samantha replied, motioning to the empty seat across from her. The woman sat down and offered a warm smile. I'm Grace. I run the employment program here at the center. Samantha's interest peaked. Employment program? Grace nodded. Yes, we help people get back on their feet by offering job training, resume building, and sometimes just by connecting them with the right people. It's not easy finding work when you're in a tough spot, but we've had a lot of success stories. Samantha hesitated, feeling a mix of hope and doubt. I, I'm not sure if I'm ready. Everything happened so fast and I'm still trying to figure things out. Grace reached across the table, her hand resting on Samantha's arm in a gesture of reassurance. That's completely understandable. The first step is always the hardest, but you don't have to do it alone. We're here to support you at whatever pace you're comfortable with. Samantha looked into Grace's eyes and saw only kindness and understanding. She realized that Grace, like Lily, was offering her something she hadn't felt in a long time, trust. Maybe I could start with something small, Samantha said, her voice tentative but hopeful. I used to work in project management, but I'm open to anything right now. Grace's eyes lit up. Project management, that's a great skill to have. We can definitely work with that. How about we start by updating your resume? We can do that today, and when you're ready, we'll move on to job searching. Samantha nodded, feeling a sense of purpose she hadn't felt in what seemed like forever. I'd like that. After breakfast, Grace led Samantha to a small office in the back of the community center. The room was modest, with a few desks, some computers, and shelves lined with books and files. It was a space dedicated to helping people rebuild their lives, one step at a time. Let's start with the basics, Grace said as they sat down at one of the desks. She handed Samantha a notepad and a pen. Write down everything you can remember about your previous jobs, what you did, the skills you used, and any accomplishments you're proud of. As Samantha began to write, memories of her old life came flooding back. She had been good at her job, organized, efficient, and always ready to go the extra mile. But those days felt like they belonged to a different person someone who had everything under control. Still, as she listed her skills and achievements, she realized that she hadn't lost those abilities. They were still a part of her, even if she had been knocked down. After a while, Grace reviewed Samantha's notes, nodding in approval. This is great, Samantha. You have a lot of valuable experience. We'll craft a strong resume that highlights your strengths. They spent the next few hours working together, revising and refining the resume, 
until it was polished and professional. Grace also gave Samantha tips on how to approach interviews and how to explain the gap in her employment without delving into the painful details of her recent struggles. Honesty is important, Grace advised, but you don't have to share everything. Focus on what you bring to the table and how you're ready to move forward. Samantha appreciated Grace's guidance and found herself feeling more confident as the day went on. By the time they finished, she had a resume she could be proud of and a plan for the future. Thank you, Grace, Samantha said, genuinely grateful. I didn't think I'd be able to do this, but you've made it seem possible. Grace smiled warmly. You did the hard part, Samantha. You decided to take that first step. Just keep going, one step at a time. As Samantha left the office, she felt lighter, as if a weight had been lifted from her shoulders. She wasn't just surviving anymore. She was beginning to take control of her life again. The community center wasn't just a place to stay. It was a place to rebuild. Over the next few days, Samantha continued to work on herself. She attended workshops at the center, learning new skills, and reconnecting with the strengths she thought she had lost. Lily became a close friend, and they often spent time together, talking about their dreams and what the future might hold. Samantha also began to open up to others at the center, sharing her story and listening to theirs. Each person she met had faced their own battles. Some had lost jobs. Others had suffered through broken relationships or illnesses. But they were all united by a common thread, the will to keep going. And in that shared struggle, Samantha found a sense of community she hadn't felt in years. One evening, after a particularly productive day at the center, Samantha sat in her room, reflecting on how much had changed in such a short time. She no longer felt like the same broken woman who had wandered the streets just a week ago. She was healing, slowly but surely, and for the first time in a long time, she was starting to believe in herself again. As she looked out the window at the stars twinkling in the night sky, Samantha made a promise to herself. She would not give up. She would keep moving forward, one day at a time, until she had built a new life, one based not on what she had lost, but on what she had learned and gained along the way. As the weeks passed, Samantha began to find her footing in this new chapter of her life. The community center became a sanctuary, a place where she could not only rebuild, but also rediscover parts of herself that had been buried under the weight of her troubles. One crisp autumn morning, as Samantha was helping Lily organize donations in the center's storage room, she felt a sense of satisfaction she hadn't known in a long time. Each item she sorted, warm coats, canned goods, boxes of toiletries, represented a small piece of hope for someone else in need. You've really become a part of this place, Lily said, smiling as she folded a blanket. It's like you've always been here. Samantha returned the smile, feeling a warmth in her chest. I'm just glad to be useful. It feels good to be doing something that matters. Lily paused, her expression thoughtful. You know, I've been thinking, you have such a talent for organizing and managing things. Have you considered taking on a more permanent role here at the center? We could really use someone with your skills. Samantha was taken aback by the suggestion. The idea of working at the community center full-time hadn't crossed her mind, but as she considered it, she realized how much it appealed to her. I hadn't thought about it, but I'd love to help more if you need me. Lily's face lit up. We definitely need you. How about you start by helping coordinate our upcoming winter clothing drive? It's a big event, and we could use all the help we can get. Samantha felt a surge of excitement. The prospect of taking on a leadership role, even in a volunteer capacity, made her feel like she was reclaiming a part of her identity. I'd love to, she said, her voice firm with resolve. Let's do it. Over the next few weeks, Samantha threw herself into planning the winter clothing drive. She worked closely with Grace and Lily, coordinating donations, reaching out to local businesses for support, and organizing a team of volunteers. It was hard work, but it was the kind of work that made her feel alive, with a purpose she hadn't felt since she lost her job. One afternoon, as she was making calls to local stores to request donations, a familiar name popped up on her screen, Patterson's Outfitters. It was a high-end clothing store she had worked with during her days as a project manager, back when her life was still intact. Samantha hesitated for a moment, memories of her old life rushing back. She had been a respected professional, confident and in control. 
but that version of herself felt like a lifetime ago. With a deep breath, she decided to make the call. She was no longer the same person, but she still had something to offer. Hello? This is Samantha Carter from the Greenfield Community Center, she began, when the store manager answered. We're organizing a winter clothing drive, and I was wondering if Patterson's Outfitters would be interested in donating any items to help those in need. The manager paused for a moment. Samantha Carter? I remember you. Didn't you used to work in marketing? Samantha felt a pang of anxiety, but she pushed it aside. Yes, that's right, but I'm focused on something different now, something important. We're trying to help people who don't have warm clothes for the winter, and we could really use your support. The manager's tone softened. I appreciate what you're doing, Samantha. Let me see what we can contribute. I'm sure we can find something. Relief washed over Samantha as she thanked the manager and hung up the phone. She had feared the conversation would dredge up painful memories, but instead, it had reminded her that she still had connections, still had influence, and could still make a difference. As the day of the clothing drive approached, Samantha worked tirelessly to ensure everything was ready. The community center buzzed with activity as volunteers sorted donations and prepared for the big event. Samantha found herself stepping into a leadership role naturally, guiding the volunteers and making sure every detail was covered. On the morning of the clothing drive, Samantha arrived at the center early, her heart pounding with anticipation. The sky was overcast, and a light snow had begun to fall making the event even more critical for those who would come seeking help. She walked through the hall, checking the tables stacked with coats, hats, gloves, and blankets, feeling a sense of pride in what they had accomplished. As the doors opened, people began to stream in, families, individuals, young and old, all looking for something to keep them warm through the harsh winter months. Samantha greeted them with a smile, directing them to the different sections where they could find what they needed. Thank you so much, an elderly woman said as Samantha handed her a thick wool coat. I don't know what I would have done without this. Samantha's heart swelled with emotion. You're very welcome. Stay warm out there. The day flew by in a blur of activity. The volunteers worked tirelessly, making sure everyone who came through the doors found something to keep them warm. As the event wound down, Samantha took a moment to step outside and breathe in the crisp winter air. The snow had begun to stick to the ground, covering the city in a blanket of white. As she stood there, watching the snow fall, she felt a presence beside her. It was Grace, her face flushed from the day's work, but glowing with satisfaction. You did an amazing job today, Samantha, Grace said, her voice filled with admiration. You've really made a difference. Samantha smiled, her eyes misting with tears. Thank you, Grace. I didn't think I could ever feel this way again, like I was part of something bigger than myself. Grace nodded, her gaze warm and understanding. That's because you are, and you're not alone. We're all in this together. Samantha looked out at the snow-covered streets, feeling a deep sense of contentment. She had come so far from the woman who had lost everything, who had wandered the streets with nothing but a suitcase and a broken heart. Now, she was part of a community, making a real impact in the lives of others. As she turned to head back inside, Lily rushed over, her cheeks pink from the cold. Samantha, there's someone here asking for you. Samantha frowned slightly, wondering who it could be. She followed Lily back inside, her heart thudding with a mix of curiosity and unease. When she entered the main hall, she saw a man standing by the door, his back to her. He turned around at the sound of her footsteps, and Samantha's breath caught in her throat. It was Jason, her ex-husband. He looked different, tired, worn as if the months had taken their toll on him. For a moment they stood there, staring at each other, the memories of their past hanging heavy between them. Samantha, Jason said, his voice soft and filled with something she couldn't quite place. I, I didn't know where else to go. Samantha's mind raced. The last person she expected to see here was Jason, the man who had walked out on her when she was at her lowest. But instead of the anger she thought she would feel, there was a strange calmness within her. Why are you here, Jason? She asked, her voice steady. Jason looked down at his feet as if ashamed. I made a mistake, Sam. A big one. I... I lost everything. The business fell apart, and Scarlet, she left me. I know I don't deserve it, but I need help. Samantha felt a mixture of emotions swirling inside her. There was a time when Jason's betrayal would have broken her, 
But now, standing in this place where she had rebuilt her life, she realized how far she had come. You turned your back on me when I needed you most, Samantha said, her voice firm but not unkind. You walked away, Jason. I know, Jason whispered, his voice breaking. And I'm so sorry. I've been carrying that guilt ever since. I just, I didn't know how to fix it. Samantha looked at him, seeing the broken man before her. A part of her wanted to help, to reach out and offer him the same kindness that had been shown to her. But another part of her knew that some bridges were better left burned. You're here at the community center, Jason, she said softly. They help people who need it. But if you're looking for something more from me, I can't give it to you. Jason looked up, his eyes filled with regret. I understand, he said quietly. I just thank you for hearing me out. Samantha nodded, watching as Jason turned and walked away, disappearing into the falling snow. She stood there for a moment, letting the emotions wash over her. It was a strange, bittersweet feeling, one of closure, but also of a door that had finally, irrevocably closed. As she turned back to the bustling activity of the community center, Samantha felt a deep sense of peace. She had faced her past and emerged stronger. Now it was time to look forward, to continue building the life she deserved. And as she rejoined the volunteers inside, she knew she was exactly where she was meant to be. After the encounter with Jason, Samantha felt a strange sense of lightness, as if a lingering burden had finally been lifted. The past had tried to pull her back, but she had stood firm. Now, she was free to move forward without the shadows of what once was. The community center remained a constant source of purpose and fulfillment in her life. The winter clothing drive had been a huge success, and Samantha's role in organizing it had earned her the respect and admiration of both the staff and those who had benefited from the event. More than that, it gave her a renewed sense of self-worth. One morning, as she was reviewing donation receipts in the center's small office, Lily walked in, holding a thick envelope. Samantha, this just arrived for you, she said, handing it over. Samantha frowned slightly as she took the envelope. There was no return address, just her name written in a neat script. She opened it carefully and pulled out a letter, along with a check that made her eyes widen in surprise. Dear Samantha, the letter began, I don't know if you remember me, but I was one of the recipients at the winter clothing drive. Your kindness and the care you put into that event meant more to me than I can express. I was down on my luck, but that day, you helped me believe in the goodness of people again. Samantha paused her heart swelling with emotion as she continued reading. I've recently come into some money, a small inheritance, and I wanted to give back to the community that helped me when I needed it most. Please accept this donation and use it to continue the wonderful work you're doing at the center. With gratitude, Helen Richards. Samantha stared at the check, a generous sum that could make a real difference in the center's operations. She felt a lump in her throat, overwhelmed by the impact of her efforts. Lily leaned over to read the letter, then gasped when she saw the check. Samantha, this is incredible. This could fund so many programs. Job training, more food drives, even a shelter expansion. Samantha nodded, still trying to process it all. I never imagined something like this would happen. It's amazing to see how one act of kindness can ripple out and touch so many lives. Lily smiled, her eyes shining with pride for her friend. You're making a real difference, Samantha. You've become a leader here someone people look up to. You should be proud of yourself. For the first time in a long time, Samantha allowed herself to feel that pride. She had come so far from the woman who had been left with nothing, and now she was someone who could inspire and uplift others. It was a powerful realization. The donation from Helen Richards was the catalyst for new opportunities at the community center. With the funds, they were able to expand their programs, offering more job training, financial literacy classes, and even a small daycare to help parents who were trying to get back on their feet. Samantha found herself deeply involved in these new initiatives, her organizational skills in high demand. She loved every minute of it, especially seeing the tangible impact their work had on the lives of the people who came through the center. One evening, as she was preparing to leave, Grace approached her with a thoughtful expression. Samantha, I've been meaning to talk to you about something. Samantha turned to her, curious. What's on your mind? Grace took a deep breath, her eyes warm and serious. The center has been growing rapidly thanks to the work you've been doing. 
We've been discussing the possibility of expanding our leadership team, and we'd like to offer you a full-time position as our program director. Samantha blinked in surprise. Program director? Grace nodded. You've already been doing so much of the work. This would just make it official. You'd have more control over the programs we offer, and it would be a paid position. We need someone with your experience and passion to guide us as we continue to grow. For a moment, Samantha was speechless. The offer was everything she could have hoped for, an opportunity to make a real difference with the stability of a full-time job. It was more than just a role. It was a chance to build a new life, one that aligned with her values and strengths. But with the excitement came a wave of apprehension. This was a big step, one that would require her to fully commit to this new path. Could she handle the responsibility? Was she ready to leave the past behind and embrace this new chapter? Grace seemed to sense her hesitation. You don't have to decide right now, she said gently. Take some time to think about it. But just know that we believe in you, Samantha. You've already done so much for this community, and we'd love for you to be part of our team in a bigger way. Samantha smiled, feeling a swell of gratitude for Grace's faith in her. Thank you, Grace. I'll definitely think about it. That night, Samantha lay awake in her bed, her mind racing with possibilities. The offer from Grace was a gift, but it also represented a choice. A choice to fully embrace this new life and leave behind the remnants of the person she once was. As she stared at the ceiling, Samantha thought about all she had been through. The loss of her job, her marriage, her home. It had all been devastating. But in the midst of that pain, she had found strength she didn't know she had. She had found a new community, new friends, and a new purpose. And now, she had the chance to build something even greater. The next morning, as the first rays of dawn broke through her window, Samantha made her decision. She would accept Grace's offer and take on the role of program director. She was ready to fully commit to this new life, to use her skills and experience to help others in the way she had been helped. It was time to step into the future with confidence. When she arrived at the center, Samantha sought out Grace, finding her in the middle of a meeting with Lily and a few other staff members. Grace looked up as Samantha entered, a question in her eyes. Samantha smiled, feeling a surge of determination. Grace, I've made my decision. I'd be honored to accept the position of program director. The room erupted in cheers, and Grace beamed, rushing over to hug Samantha. I knew you'd say yes. This is going to be amazing, Samantha. We're going to do so much good together. Lily joined the hug, her eyes sparkling with excitement. You're going to be incredible, Samantha. I'm so happy for you. As they celebrated, Samantha felt a deep sense of belonging. For the first time in a long time, she knew she was exactly where she was meant to be. This was her path now, and she was ready to walk it with all the strength and courage she had gained. Together, they would continue to build a brighter future for the community, and for herself. With her new role as program director, Samantha found herself busier than ever. The community center was thriving, and the programs she had helped to implement were making a tangible difference in the lives of those who walked through the doors. Each day brought new challenges, but also new opportunities to grow and to help others. But as much as she loved her work, there were still moments when the past crept in, uninvited and unwelcome. One afternoon, while she was reviewing some proposals for a new job training program, a knock on her office door interrupted her thoughts. Come in, Samantha called, expecting to see Lily or Grace. Instead, the door opened to reveal Jason. He looked more worn than the last time she had seen him, his eyes shadowed with exhaustion and regret. Samantha, he said quietly, stepping into the office. I'm sorry to show up like this, but I didn't know where else to go. Samantha felt a surge of conflicting emotions, anger, sadness, but also a twinge of sympathy. She had thought she was done with Jason, but seeing him now so vulnerable made her realize that perhaps she wasn't as detached as she had hoped. What do you want, Jason? She asked, her voice steady but guarded. Jason took a deep breath, as if gathering the strength to speak. I've been going through a lot since everything happened. Losing the business, losing Scarlet, it made me realize how much I've lost and how much of it was my own fault. He looked down at his hands, clearly struggling with what he was about to say. I don't expect anything from you, Samantha, 
I know I don't deserve your forgiveness, but I wanted to apologize truly and sincerely. I hurt you, and I can't take that back, but I'm trying to make amends to be a better person. Samantha listened, her heart conflicted. Jason's words were sincere, and she could see the pain in his eyes, but forgiveness wasn't something she could give easily, not after everything he had done. There was a time when your apology would have meant everything to me, Samantha said, choosing her words carefully. But now, I've moved on. I've built a new life, a life where I've found purpose and strength. I've learned to stand on my own, and I'm proud of who I've become. Jason nodded, his expression one of quiet acceptance. I understand. I don't expect anything from you, Samantha. I just wanted you to know that I'm sorry, and that I'll always regret what I did. For a long moment, they stood in silence, the weight of the past hanging between them. Finally, Samantha spoke, her voice soft but firm. I forgive you, Jason, she said, surprising even herself with the words. But that doesn't mean things can go back to the way they were. We've both changed, and we need to move forward separately. Jason's eyes filled with tears, and he nodded, clearly moved by her words. Thank you, Samantha. That means more to me than you'll ever know. As he turned to leave, Samantha felt a strange sense of closure. Forgiving Jason didn't erase the pain he had caused, but it did allow her to fully release the hold that pain had on her. She had chosen to forgive not for his sake, but for her own, so she could continue to move forward with a clear heart and an open mind. After Jason left, Samantha sat back down at her desk, feeling lighter than she had in a long time. There was still work to be done, both at the community center and within herself, but she knew she was on the right path. In the weeks that followed, Samantha threw herself into her role with renewed energy. The center was expanding, and the new job training program she had been working on was set to launch soon. She was excited about the future and about the positive impact they could continue to have on the community. One evening, as she was preparing to leave, Grace and Lily came into her office, their faces lit up with excitement. We've got some great news, Samantha, Grace said, holding up a letter. The city has approved our proposal for the new job training program, and they're offering us a grant to help fund it. Samantha's eyes widened with delight. That's amazing. This will allow us to reach even more people. Lily nodded enthusiastically. And it's all thanks to you, Samantha. You've been the driving force behind this. We couldn't have done it without you. Samantha smiled, feeling a deep sense of accomplishment. She had come so far from the woman who had been lost and alone, and now she was making a real difference in the world. It was more than she had ever imagined for herself. As they celebrated the good news, Samantha couldn't help but reflect on the journey that had brought her here. The hardships, the betrayals, the moments of doubt, they had all shaped her into the person she was today. And now, with the support of her new community and the strength she had found within herself, she knew she could face whatever challenges lay ahead. That night, as Samantha walked home under the glow of the city lights, she felt a profound sense of peace. The past no longer haunted her, and the future was full of possibilities. She was ready to embrace it all, knowing that she had the courage and resilience to overcome anything. And as she looked up at the stars, shining brightly above, Samantha knew that she was finally, truly free. The months that followed were a whirlwind of activity for Samantha and the community center. The new job training program was a resounding success, drawing in participants from all over the city. Each day, Samantha saw the impact of their work. People who had once felt hopeless were finding new opportunities, gaining confidence, and rebuilding their lives, just as she had done. As the program grew, so did Samantha's sense of purpose. She had found her calling, a place where her skills and passions could make a real difference. But more than that, she had found a community, a family of sorts, made up of the people she worked with and the individuals they served. For the first time in a long time, Samantha felt whole. One crisp spring morning, Samantha was in her office, reviewing the latest reports from the job training program. She was pleased to see that several participants had recently secured employment, a testament to the program's success and the hard work of everyone involved. Just as she was finishing up, there was a soft knock on her door. Samantha looked up to see Grace standing there, a warm smile on her face. Do you have a minute? Grace asked. Of course, Samantha replied, setting down her papers. What's up? 
Grace walked in and closed the door behind her, a gesture that told Samantha this was more than just a casual conversation. I wanted to talk to you about something important, Grace began, her tone serious but kind. The board of directors met yesterday, and we've been discussing the future of the community center. Samantha's heart skipped a beat, a flicker of anxiety passing through her. Is something wrong? Grace shook her head quickly. No, no, nothing like that. In fact, it's quite the opposite. The center has been thriving under your leadership, and the board has been incredibly impressed with everything you've accomplished. Samantha felt a mixture of relief and curiosity. So what does that mean? Grace's smile widened. It means that the board wants to offer you the position of executive director. It's a big step up, but it's clear to all of us that you're the right person to lead this organization into the future. Samantha was stunned. Executive director? It was an incredible opportunity, one that would place her at the helm of the entire organization. But with it came a great deal of responsibility, a responsibility she wasn't sure she was ready for. Wow, Samantha said, her voice barely above a whisper. I, I don't know what to say. Grace reached across the desk, taking Samantha's hand in hers. You don't have to decide right away. Take some time to think about it. But just know that we believe in you, Samantha. You've already done so much good here, and I know you're capable of even more. Samantha nodded, feeling a whirlwind of emotions. The offer was a testament to how far she had come, a recognition of her hard work and dedication, but it also meant stepping fully into a role that would demand even more of her time, energy, and heart. As Grace left the office, Samantha sat back in her chair, her mind racing. Could she do it? Could she take on the mantle of leadership and guide the community center into its next chapter? The doubts crept in, whispering that she wasn't ready, that she wasn't strong enough. But then she thought about all the people who had come through the doors of the center, people who had faced incredible challenges, just as she had, and who had found the strength to rebuild their lives. She thought about the volunteers, the staff, and the countless lives they had touched. She thought about the new family she had found here, the sense of belonging she had craved for so long, and she realized that she wasn't alone. She had a team of dedicated people beside her, a community that believed in her as much as she believed in them. Together, they could face any challenge, overcome any obstacle. That evening, as Samantha walked home, she made a decision. She would accept the offer. She would become the executive director of the community center, not because she had something to prove, but because she had found her true purpose. This was her calling, her chance to make a lasting impact on the world around her. The next morning, Samantha called Grace and accepted the position. The news was met with cheers and congratulations from the staff, and Samantha felt a surge of excitement for what lay ahead. She knew the road wouldn't be easy. There would be challenges, setbacks, and difficult decisions to make, but she was ready to face them all. In the weeks that followed, Samantha settled into her new role, taking on the responsibilities with the same dedication and passion she had shown from the beginning. She worked closely with the board to develop new initiatives, expand the center's reach, and secure funding to ensure their programs could continue to thrive. But she also made time for the little things, the moments that reminded her why she had chosen this path in the first place. She still spent time with the participants of the job training program offering advice and encouragement. She still helped out with the food drives, clothing distributions, and other community events. And she still took the time to listen, to be there for those who needed a friendly ear. One afternoon, as she was walking through the center, Samantha noticed a young woman sitting alone in the dining area, looking lost and uncertain. She recognized that look. It was the same one she had worn not so long ago. Samantha approached her with a gentle smile. Hi, I'm Samantha. Is there anything I can do to help? The woman looked up, her eyes filled with a mix of fear and hope. I'm not sure, she said softly. I've been through a lot, and I don't know where to start. Samantha sat down beside her, offering her a reassuring smile. I understand. You don't have to go through this alone. We're here to help you one step at a time. The woman's eyes filled with tears, and she nodded, a glimmer of hope shining through. Thank you, she whispered. As Samantha sat with her, offering words of comfort and encouragement, she felt a deep sense of fulfillment. This was why she had chosen this path, because she knew what it was like to be lost, 
and she knew the power of kindness, of support, of community. When the woman left, Samantha watched her go, feeling a sense of pride in the work they were doing. She knew that the road ahead would be filled with challenges, but she also knew that they would face them together, as a community. And as Samantha stood there, surrounded by the bustling activity of the center, she realized that she had found her place in the world. She had found a home, a purpose, and a future filled with hope. The past was behind her, a chapter that had shaped her, but no longer defined her. Now, she was ready to write a new chapter, one filled with love, compassion, and the unshakable belief that no matter how lost someone might feel, there is always a way forward. And as the sun set on that day, casting a warm glow over the city, Samantha knew that she was exactly where she was meant to be.